Hello and welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Jeff Kanata, flying solo today because Ashley Esqueda has the day off, but fear not, we still have your daily dose of headlines. If you're like me, when you saw the movie WALL-E, you wanted a little robot friend. Well, guess what? Check out Cosmo. Anki announced Cosmo this morning, a small robot that they're claiming is one of the, quote, most sophisticated consumer robots available today, unquote. Cosmo has an emotion engine and AI on board, allowing him to express emotions through voice and expressions, and he can even recognize faces that he sees often. If you leave him alone, he even gets sad. He'll work with iOS and Android devices, and he looks like he could be as adorable as Anki claims. Hopefully this isn't just a Tomagotchi on steroids, but if you want to get your hands on Cosmo, Anki already has a pre-order page up and orders ship this October. I want one of these little guys, but he is little. If you see in the video, it's really tiny. I was kind of hoping he might be a little more, I don't know, R2-D2 size, but uh, I think it's still very, very cool. Johns Hopkins University is celebrating a very interesting prototype this morning as well. When George LeVay lost his hands to a meningitis infection, he still wanted to play games. So he teamed up with two other grad students and made GEAR, or Game Enhancing Augmented Reality. It looks like a simple pair of platform sandals, but each one has a trio of sensors inside that can be mapped to game controls, allowing someone without hands to play video games with up to 20 different specific actions. The result is good enough that 80% of a small survey of around 50 viewers couldn't tell the difference between which people used gear and which didn't. It recently won the grand prize in the 2016 Intel Cornell Cup, and the team is already in the process of patenting and potentially licensing the concept. This is fantastic. Anything that allows more gamers with varying levels of ability to play games, I'm in favor of, and I just think this is a spectacular achievement in, in making more accessibility for more people. Well, if you want to comment on our stories, you can always use our hashtag HeyTD. That's HeyTD, like you're shouting at us. And then on Thursday, when Ashley's back and we're hitting, sitting here chatting together about the stories, uh, we will use your comments and incorporate them into our discussion. I think uh, I, it's safe to say Ashley would want us to talk about uh, a little robot. She's fascinated with robots, as am I. So I think we're probably going to be talking about that one, but you can comment on either story by using HeyTD as the hashtag. All right, now it's time for our Phonetographer of the Day. Today's Phonetographer of the Day is Raphael, who took this photo with an iPhone 6S. Raphael writes, Hi, Ashley and Jeff. I'm Raphael Atienza from the Philippines, a longtime CNET podcast watcher. This is a selfie of me and my family taken on my iPhone 6S on a recent trip to Hodaiko, Japan. This is my sister's last hurrah for traveling before she gives birth to her son or daughter. I took this using the rear camera of the iPhone using panorama mode. Yes, I do give CNET tomorrow daily permission to use my photos. Also, my nickname Raf is pronounced uh like Raf. <laughs> I am the one with the blue collar, my sister's husband in white, my sister and my sister's husband's sister. <laughs> this is a selfie with sage and some purple sea urchin flower in Farm Tomita, Ferrano, Hodaiko, Japan. Raf, ah, uh, this is a great, great picture. I love your family. It's wonderful. I love seeing the selfies, but I have to say, the only thing you told me how to pronounce is the one thing that I think I could have figured out. Raf. The city names, <laughs> your friends' names, all of your family. I'm sure I messed up all of that stuff. Your last name. So apologies for that. Hey, if you want to be our photographer, uh, we only have a few more days of our current theme, which is selfies. I've been loving those. But you can always send photos to tomorrow at cnet.com. Be sure to tell us how to pronounce anything that might be questionable in your, in your email, including places and names and last names. Also, give us permission to use it on the show. Tell us which device you took it on. And we love little stories about why you took that particular photo. That's going to do it for this episode of Tomorrow Daily. Ashley will be back to join me tomorrow. We'll have more headlines for you and then our long show on Thursday. So be sure to head back. Until then, be good humans. See ya.